Science stations are a great way for students to get more involved in a topic, to do more inquiry investigations, and to go deeper into a topic. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm a middle school science teacher with over 25 years experience in the classroom, and I love helping other teachers empower their students to take more ownership of their learning. Today, I'm going to be talking about science stations. Now, I was introduced to science stations well over 15 years ago when I was looking at the blended learning model, and that included the science station rotation model and the flipped classroom. And I loved how the science stations allowed my students to hit the topic in multiple ways and also gave me time to meet that small group core students instead of all 36 so I could really help the students and figure out where they were struggling and what they needed support on. As the years have gone on though, I've modified the science stations a little bit and I like to mix it up a little. So I'm gonna give you some different ways that you can do science stations in your classroom to see which one will fit your needs. One way you can do science stations is to have students do it during the explore phase as an inquiry investigation. Now, during this time, they are becoming more familiar with the topic. They don't really have a base understanding. So you'll want to provide them with more guidance of inquiry and have them kind of come up with their own conclusions about what they're investigating and what the topic is going to be about. This would be a great way to do online labs or to do some hands-on labs and have them rotate through different stations and gather evidence and then have them answer a question at the end. I always love to have them do a CER at the end where they're gathering evidence to answer a question and at the very end, they're gonna write their own claim evidence reasoning for that question based on their observations from the different stations that they hit. And it's okay if they don't know the topic. I mean, think about um, motion. If they're doing a speed acceleration station, that would be fine if you just give them a formula, speed equals distance over time, and have them then go through the different things to have them develop their own ideas about how speed, distance, and time are related. You can also do science stations during the elaborate phase as kind of a menu choice. And in these ones, you'll wanna have something that's maybe a little more complicated where it's gonna require them to have some basic knowledge about the topic. So choose labs, hands-on, online, whatever you want to have them actually go through different stations that will have them take what they've been learning and now take it to the next level and do it multiple ways, multiple modalities. That's what science stations are all about, is to hit the same topic in different ways. Now, something I like to do as the year is progressing is I like to start modifying my science stations and giving them more choice. For example, in my Newton's Laws unit, when we're in third quarter, I have been teaching for such a long time that I have multiple resources for teaching those three laws. So instead of having me choose the labs that they're gonna be doing, the online investigation, the hands-on labs, I instead give them multiple choices and multiple activities they can do and have them choose the one that they think is interesting for them. Now they're not gonna get through all of them and I know that. So my goal is to give them a point system and they can choose what stations they're going to do and what points they are going to earn with that. And then they have a time frame in which they need to accomplish those stations. But that's an excellent way, once the students become familiar with science stations, once they become familiar with doing an online investigation and problem solving through the directions and figuring out things and doing hands-on labs and they're becoming more um, confident in doing these activities, it's a great way to release the power from you to them and put them into the driver's seat of their learning. So having multiple activities that they can do with multiple stations and letting them choose which ones they're gonna do. A modification with, of that 
would be to give students some guidance on which stations need to be done first before they can do another one. For example, if the stations are going to build on each other where they're going to become more difficult or in order to do, uh, let's say this one lab, they have to have some prior knowledge, then you might want to let them do the stations as they can transition from, let's say, the explore phase to the explain phase. And in some of them, they have to do the explore phase in core investigations first. And once they're done with that, then they can move on to the explain phase science stations, where they're now going to learn more about the topic and they're gonna get that basic information. Or you could do it from the explain to the elaborate, where they have to do the explain phase first, get that background information, but they get to choose how they're going to get it, and then move on to the elaborate phase where now they're going to be doing activities that will extend their knowledge. One thing that I have found this year that I have started doing um, was I started incorporating the flipped classroom model with my science stations and doing uh, an in-class flip. So instead of having the students watch the videos at home, it became part of their science stations. And I had it sometimes where the video or the reading, I had them do a choice, it could have been done after they did the inquiry part. So I had them do the um, explore phase stations and they kind of just were getting their own ideas, coming up with their own conclusions. And then they moved on to the explain phase stations. And with that, they had a video or reading or they could um, look up websites to get that information. So it was encompassed with that. Um, sometimes I also did it where before they could move on to the elaborate phase stations that they had to then do the explain phase where they, again, could have watched a video, they could have done a reading, they could have um, looked up information, answered some questions by looking it up on websites. They get that basic background information. But again, the flipped classroom idea is that the students are moving at their own pace. So instead of you giving the presentation style where everyone's taking notes in class and everyone's trying to move together as a class to take notes, the students are taking notes on their own pace. They're going at their own speed. So I did start to do this one here and I did give them a time frame and I had extra stuff for students to do. If they finished early, they could work on a genius hour project. Uh, they could work on extending their knowledge or reviewing, um, playing re more review games to get ready for a test. So I did have a, a time frame that they had to continue and do it in, and there was some buffer days to help them. But it was uh, a nice way to do the flip classroom with the science stations. So those are just some ideas to do science stations. Again, science stations, the whole idea is you have, instead of the whole class doing one lab or one activity, there's multiple activities going on at the same time. All of them are focused on the topic for the unit, but they're doing it in different ways to hit different modalities to really help differentiate your class and meet the needs of your different students because we all know we have a lot of students with a lot of different needs in one class, so this is just one way to be able to help them. Let me know how you do science stations. I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.